Chapter 15 Wow, Stella, that's such a great dolphin! Miss Bell says as she looks down at my project. She leans over to me. Can you do me a favor? We need a poster for the third grade spelling bee tomorrow. Since you're such an expert at drawing dolphins, would you be interested in doing it? I sit up and exclaim, yes! Wonderful. I'll give you the poster and materials. Ever since I shared Captain Robin Monkey with Miss Bell, she has been giving me extra projects. She also gives me story ideas all the time. Some of them are not that great, but I love that she talks to me as if I'm a good writer. Dolphins are also the mascot of my school. On the last day of first grade, we got to vote for a new mascot. I voted for dolphins because back then, I mixed up cute little penguins with dolphins. I was really bummed when I saw a dolphin mural instead of a penguin mural when we got back from summer vacation. That's when I started learning all about fishes and all marine life. Come Stella, let's go to the supply closet to see what you need. Together we select glitter, markers, and a poster board, and she puts it in a tote bag for me. I can't wait to see what you'll do, she says. As soon as I get home, I draw a dolphin jumping with big letters that spell out spelling bee. I even put glitter on the waves to make it more magical. I'm so happy that I even show Poncho. Look, Poncho, I say. He zips around his fishbowl. I'm pretty sure that he means he likes it. The next morning, I proudly stare at my poster as I eat my bowl of cereal. It's so great that my poster will be on display for everyone to see. Then I start thinking about the spelling bee. I don't mind spelling out loud too much, but I also have never done a spelling bee in my life. I ask Nick, have you ever done a spelling bee before? Yep, they're pretty fun. Let's practice. I'll quiz you. Okay, I reply. Spell Bigfoot. He smirks. I groan. Okay, what about alligator? I groan again. Mom takes a sip of her coffee and says, I'm sure you'll do fantastico. Despite Mom's encouragement in the morning, I'm so nervous by lunch. Lauren is sitting with us today. Ever since we ate lunch together, she joins Jenny and me a couple times a week when she isn't reading. I'm about to ask Jenny about the spelling bee when Jessica interrupts us. Look, it's a weirdo twosome. I think about what Mom said on Valentine's Day, so instead of looking up at Jessica, I pretend to ignore her. My heart is racing, but I just look forward and talk to Jenny. What do you want to do next Saturday? My mom said we could go to the movies. Jenny plays along. Ooh, I'll bring candy then. This makes Jessica so angry. Did you guys hear what I said? I called you weirdos. Did you hear something? Jenny says, putting her hand to her ear. Nothing worth listening to, I reply. Ugh, says Jessica as she storms out. Wow, what's her problem? Whispers Lauren. We shrug. Then Jenny and I give each other a quick fist bump. Then I take a big bite out of my delicious peanut butter sandwich. Secretly, I don't know if I could have been so brave without Jenny. However, I realized that Mom was right. Suddenly, I feel less nervous about the spelling bee. The spelling bee finally happens that afternoon back in the cafeteria. I see my poster hanging on the stage. The other third grade classes did posters too, but all the kids in my class agree mine is the best. Looks so good! Michelle gives me a high five. Even Stanley says so. At least I think so. I just see his mouth move and I begin to turn away. But then I remember him turning Roja on Valentine's Day. I force myself to stop and say to him, Thanks. Then turn around before he can say anything else. Since all the classes in my grade are doing the spelling bee, Jenny's already there. I rush over to sit next to her. She's sitting next to Anna and another girl. Anna is smiling much more than any of the other times I've seen her. I know that's because the other girl has to be her best friend, Isabel. Being that happy is just what happens whenever you're near your best friend. After I say hi to Jenny and Anna, I whisper, Hi, Isabel. And she waves back. I was right. 
Our principal, Miss Richard, is on stage with a microphone. She has on her dolphin pin, which she only wears on special days. Welcome, third graders! Today's the annual spelling bee, and we're going to be doing it alphabetically, of course. We will have prizes for those who make it to second round, and a big prize for the grand winner. Everyone claps. The prizes at our school are pretty awesome. Kids have won school t-shirts, dolphin-shaped pencils, and even a pizza party. I whisper to Jenny, I hope we get a pizza party. Jenny nods. Miss Richards calls all the students with a last name that starts with A onto the stage. I start to get clammy hands and a sweaty forehead. I didn't know we had to go on stage. Trisha Abrams heads to the microphone first. Miss Richards says, Trisha, please spell the word happiest. Trisha looks around, then she says, happiest. H-A-P-P-Y-E-S-T. Happiest. Miss Richard presses a buzzer, which makes a big uh, noise. Sorry, Trisha, that's wrong. Good try. Take a seat in the back of the audience. Jessica Anderson, do you know? Miss Richards asks. Jessica sticks out her chest and says loudly, Yes, it's happiest. H A P P I E S T. Happiest. Mrs. Richard presses another buzzer, which makes a perky ding noise. She says, correct. Jessica, please take a seat on stage. I don't want to hear the uh, noise. What if I get a word that I don't know how to spell? Or worst of all, don't know how to say? My stomach starts to hurt. Maybe I could go to the nurse. I wish mom didn't have to work. Some of the other kids get to go home when they go to the nurse. But Mom can only pick me up if it's an emergency. Maybe this is a real emergency. I mean, a stomach ache could be a sign of something else that I don't even know about. Before I can figure out my escape plan, Mrs. Richards says, Will all the children with the last names beginning with D come up to the stage? I look at Jenny and whisper, I don't want to. You'll be great, Stella. You got this, she says as she pats my back. It makes me feel a little better, but my legs feel wobbly like flan as I walk onto the stage. There are two students in front of me. The lights are so bright I can't even see what is going on. Then I hear Miss Richards say, Estrella Diaz, will you come up to this microphone? I gulp, nod my head yes, and walk up to the microphone. My hands and every part of me are shaking. Estrella, please spell disappear. I freeze. I wish I could disappear. If I spell it wrong, everyone's going to laugh. I look at Miss Bell, then Jenny. Both are smiling at me. I feel a little bit better, but my throat is closed up like I have cotton candy stuck in there. Then I remember what Mom said. I'm stronger than I realize. Finally, I close my eyes. Disappear. D. Miss Richards says, Louder, dear. I nod. D I S A P P E A R. Disappear. I hear a ding noise. Miss Richards says, Correct. You get to move to the next round. Take a seat on stage. I'm surprised. That wasn't so bad. My voice didn't sound so weird on the microphone. It sounded okay. I sit down and wait for the next round. I actually can't wait to go again. It takes a long time to get through the rest of the students. There are about 80 of us all together. So there are many dings and ah. Jenny makes it through to the next round. And of course, Stanley does too. The next word I have to spell is knowledge. And I, of course, know how to spell it. K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E. -E. I swear the ding sounds just a little bit more special the second time. I make it all the way to the third round, or the semifinals, when I misspell the word dandelion. Honestly, hearing the ah noise wasn't so bad, especially since there were only six students left on stage with me. 
I get so caught up with the spelling bee that the only way I know that I made it to the semifinals is that I get a pink ribbon with a gold star that says semifinalist. Chris Pollard ends up winning it all with the word gregarious. I don't even know what that means. Stanley also has a pink ribbon, which is surprising. I thought he'd win it all. Maybe we're alike in some ways. Anyway, Jenny helps me put my ribbon on as we walk past the dolphin mural, and then we link arms. We make ding and ah noises to each other. Maybe we sound like dolphins. No, better yet, robots. I whisper to Jenny. We both giggle as we start walking like robots. I wear my ribbon proudly the rest of the day. I can't wait to show Mom. I say quietly to myself. Then I say even softer, maybe the presentation won't be so bad. This time, I kind of believe it, too. Chapter 16 When Mom gets home from work, she makes a big deal about my spelling bee ribbon, which I don't mind. She cries, me baby. I usually don't like it when she says my baby in public, but at home it makes me hug her even more. This calls for a celebration. How about a trip to the biblioteca and some frozen yogurt afterward? I squeal and spell Y-E-S. That sounds like a great night. I also squeal because I love hearing the word biblioteca. It's such a fun word and I love going to the library. Mom changes out of her suit. As soon as Nick and I see her in jeans and the sweatshirt, we know it's time to go. Are you going to get any books for your project, Stella? She asks as she grabs her car keys. I would like a book on starfishes. Mom, did you know that if a starfish loses an arm? I hide one of my arms behind my back and then stick it out. They can grow one back? I wiggle my hands in amazement. She nods. Did you know some people are as strong as starfishes? What do you mean, Mom? You mean like superheroes? I ask. She laughs. I just mean that some people have to go through tough things and they can bounce back. Like Frida Kahlo. Oh, then I ask. Who is Frida Kahlo? I'll tell you more about her in the car, says Mom. She's fascinating. Turns out Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter who made beautiful paintings. She was in a bus accident when she was very young and had to stay in bed for months. That's when she learned how to paint. She became one of the most famous painters ever. Wow, I exclaim. Hearing about Frida makes me feel proud to be from the same country. We can get a book on her at the Biblioteca tonight, Mom says as she pulls into the library parking lot. Now the library at school is pretty cool but the public library near my house is incredible. It has three levels and beanbag chairs in the kids' section. I like to go to the reference section and look at the huge books on marine life. They have so many pictures. The library also has art exhibits and art contests. One time I got third place. We had to draw a scene from our favorite book, and mine was from James and the Giant Peach. It was the scene where the peach gets stuck on top of the Empire State Building. I found this really cool photo of the building so I could see how to draw it and added so many seagulls. So Mom framed it at home and always says that one day it will be very valuable. When we get to the library, I see a sign near the front door that reads, Local Author Presentation in the Auditorium. Mom, can we go, por favor? I ask. If I say please, Mom usually says yes. Mom looks at her watch and then at me. I'm giving her the biggest puppy dog eyes I can. She nods yes and gives me a kiss on the head. Nick says, it starts in 30 minutes. Time to move it, as he runs over to the graphic novels. In the meantime, I spot more books on marine animals, while Mom looks for a book on Frida Kahlo and some mystery novels for herself. Since I've already done research at the library for my project, I know exactly where the fish books are. I only have a few more fishes to go, and I also want to get more photos of the starfish page that I'm finishing. I find a picture of a royal star starfish that's purple 
with an orange border. Nick wanders over with a stack of graphic novels and peeks over my shoulder. I can't wait to draw it, I whisper. I'm sure it'll be great like the rest of your drawings, little Miss Frida Kahlo. I giggle. Do you think they'll have one at the Shed Aquarium? Nick shrugs his shoulders. Maybe. Also, Mom's a little busy with work, so I don't know when exactly we will go. Nick's been so great about the presentation. He told Mom about the Shed Aquarium idea, and now I just hope we really can go. We've also been brainstorming how to make my presentation more interesting, and he suggested that I should be a fisherman. That sounds a little boring. But then I came up with the idea of doing a submarine. I just need to finish my research before I start building it. Nick says, Come on, champ. Time to go. I grab his arm and we run over to Mom, who's standing near the auditorium. We enter just as the show is starting. Not only is it an author, but it's a children's book author and a girl. She starts the presentation by reading out loud a few of her books. One of them is even in English and Spanish. How cool is that? Obviously, I understand both parts. Later, she speaks about how she got started as an author. She grew up in Texas like Stanley. Turns out she had problems speaking as a kid, just like me. She would switch the letters around. Everyone thought she wasn't really smart. Because of that, she read even more and made herself write all the time. Then she decided that's what she wanted to do when she grew up. I whisper to Mom, She's a starfish. She puts her arm around me and kisses the top of my head. Then I realize that maybe I'm a starfish too. My name is Estrella, after all. When I get home, I draw the royal starfish. As soon as I'm done, I whisper to Pancho, Don't tell anyone, but I might want to be an author one day. Pancho, of course, doesn't say anything. He's the best at keeping secrets. Chapter 17 I'm in the middle of reading about narwhals when Dad picks us up. The narwhal is a type of whale. People think it has a giant tusk, but it's actually a tooth. Narwhals are extra special because they are rarely seen. People tried to keep them in captivity in the 1960s and 1970s, but sadly, they kept dying. I only see Dad once or twice a year, and this time it's right before spring break. He's in Chicago for a week with my tío Carlos. Apparently, they're going to some sort of convention for my tío's clothing store. When Dad arrives at our house, he's in a new car that I've never seen before. Dad always likes to drive instead of flying, so he must have gotten it back in Colorado. The new car is a sports car. You know, the ones that look like they go really fast. I'm used to this, though. Every time I see him, it's a new car. As we put on our seatbelts, he says that he's taking Nick and me bowling. Cool, says Nick. I don't see anything. I've never been bowling before. I'm excited, but I don't know what to expect. As soon as we get to the bowling alley, Dad says to us, You guys paying? He laughs. I look over at Nick. He's not laughing. I know why, too. Since Dad never sends us money, we never know when he will actually pay for things. Mom knows this, so she always gives us extra money when we see him just in case he makes us pay. Nick, it's just a joke. Nick is still not laughing. Dad just shrugs. He goes over to the register. One adult and two kids. Dad opens up his wallet. I see a picture of Nick when he was little. Then I see a picture of a baby. Who's that? I ask, pointing to the picture. Phew, he says. I'm a little surprised. Really? See, si, it's you, from your first passport picture before we moved to the United States. Vamos, let's get some zapatos on your feet. Apparently you can't wear regular shoes on the bowling lanes. You have to borrow these really cool shoes that are colorful. I put them on. I think I might like bowling, I say to Nick. I kick my heels together like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Let's go, Twinkle Toes, Nick says. We walk over to the lanes, and Dad enters our names into the computer. Then he hands me a few different balls to find one that I can bowl with. I find a bright orange one that I can actually carry. 
Señoritas primero, says Dad. I like it when Dad says girls go first. Nick blows a raspberry. I'm all smiles until I walk toward the lane. The floor is slippery, and I get all nervous trying to lift the ball. It feels too heavy. What do I do, Dad? I ask. It's not rocket science, it's just roll the ball, says Nick. I turn Roja. This time because I'm angry. Just because I'm new to something doesn't mean I'm stupid. I wish that I were a narwhal right now, so I could poke Nick with my giant tooth. Instead, I stick my tongue out at Nick. Then I roll the ball. It goes nowhere near the white pins. In fact, my first two balls go right into the gutter. Nick goes next. He's much better than me and knocks a few pins over. Dad is really good. He knocks over all the pins. I don't know much about bowling, but he kicks out his leg like the professionals. Dad, how come you're so good? I ask. Well, I used to go bowling a bunch when I was a teenager. He reties his shoes and looks at me. I wasn't very close to my parents. They were more concerned with their parties than with your tío and me. Once I no longer had a nana, a nanny, I spent all my time with my friends bowling or playing pool. I feel sad for a second. I never thought about Dad as a kid. It sounds kind of lonely. I love spending time with Mom and Nick. I look at him. I say in Spanish, Dad, could you teach me how to bowl better? Claro que si, mi amor Stella. Of course, my love, he says. He shows me how to line up my feet with these little arrows first. Next, he shows me how to swing my arm better and finally to let the ball roll. When I do it by myself, the ball goes slower than it did before, but it's going straight down the middle. I actually knock over some pins. Almost all of them. Way to go, Stella, says Nick. He gives me a high five. Dad kisses the top of my head. I smile. For a moment, I miss having him around. After we finish bowling, Dad drops us off at the house. Before you go, he says, grabbing a box from the back seat. Here are new coats for the two of you. I see the tags. They're from my tío's store. Dad gives Nick and me each a coat. I try mine on. It's too big. It's also pink with fur. I like pink, but a whole pink coat is too girly for me. Still, I say, gracias. I look over at Nick and I giggle. His coat is way too small. It's so tight around his shoulders, he can't even put down his arms. Oh, I guess you grew more than I realized. You're going to be as tall as your uncle. Nick just shrugs and hands him back the coat. I'll mail you a new one, Dad says. Nick looks at me. We both know that this is never going to happen. I give Dad a hug goodbye. I feel a little sad again. My dad is not all terrible. He just doesn't know better. It's like the people who used to hunt narwhals. People used to think that narwhals were related to unicorns. They didn't know they were regular sea mammals and weren't magical. I think part of dad just doesn't realize he's not doing a good job at being a father. Then again, I don't think he knows how. It doesn't sound like he had really great parents. Nick and I are lucky because at least we have mom. Nick puts his arm around me as we go back inside our house. As we open the door, I smell something wonderful. Mom is in the kitchen making albendigas again. I run into the kitchen and hug her tightly around the waist. Whoa, Stella, you surprised me. I looked up at her. I love you, Mommy. I love you more, she says as she hugs me back.